Gurney. Okay, so the title of this is Recover from Sports Injuries. And let's not forget, life is a sport out there. So type it up in the chat box. What is your sport? And is that life? Is it basketball? Is it uh, yard work? Is it you know walking? What is your sport? Type it up in the chat box there. We got a lot of great information to cover here this evening. I'm super pumped and excited. I know this is going to add a lot of value to your life. And along the way, when you have a question, uh, feel free to type it in the chat box. I will do my best to answer your uh, question directly. If I don't, I will make it a point that the next time you're in the office, I will get you an answer by then. All right, Dr. Travis, his, his uh, sport is weightlifting and dog chasing. Yes, Ronan, he's a, he's a quick little guy right there. So, you know, one of my sports is being a dad, okay? And chasing around my, my two kids, Kleeson and Kyson. All right, Jeff, I love that. Um, uh, that. That reminds me of my son. If there's a ball involved, he's in it. And so he's willing to try any sport. So I love that. So any activity is gonna be fantastic here. So we're gonna dive in. One thing I know about these webinars or these talks, those that get the most out of these presentations are the ones who engage. So I'm gonna encourage you to engage. We all know if you go to the gym, person A who's over there lifting the weights, sweating, panning, exercising, doing the work, it's gonna get the results. Person B that is uh, chatting in the corner, just kind of socializing, we know that person's not gonna get the results. So this hour is dedicated for you. So my suggestion is, is to go ahead and turn off your cell phone, put it on silent and just be present. Give yourself that space to hear what you need to hear in this conversation. Give yourself an hour. You have 168 in the week. Give yourself one hour just to tune into your body. Where are you at? Learn some things that you can start doing today or stop doing to enhance your health outcomes, support your chiropractic care, and get healthier and stronger every single day. Because the truth of the matter is, is that you're either getting healthier and stronger every single day, or your body is getting sicker or weaker. There is no stasis. Your body's health or lack thereof does not stay at one point. It's moving in one direction or the other, and there's a momentum associated to it. And as we talk here this evening, remember what we always say right from the beginning is progress, not perfection. What is the one thing that you're gonna take away from tonight's talk that is relevant to you that you know that you can start doing or stop doing over the next 30 days that'll take you to the next wellness webinar? By the way, that in June is gonna be end headaches forever. So if you or if you know somebody, a loved one, coworker or neighbor that is suffering from headaches, no matter what type of headache, no headache is normal, that is going to be our wellness topic in the month of June. But until then, today it's all about injury recovery. And if there's one word we're going to really focus on here this evening, it is about recovery. Because modern life is unnaturally stressful and we keep driving, driving, driving. Our foot on the gas pedal, go, 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 go. Hands up if you can relate. And who has time to slow down and recover, sleep or catch a breath these days? We know that things are moving a million miles a minute, and we need to make sure that we're taking care of our bodies so that when we go to play a sport, we're in a rec league, we're exercising, or whatever it is, our body is ready, able, and capable of performing. So let me go ahead, and I'm going to share my screen, um, and then let's just dive right into this. I'm pumped. I'm excited. This is, this is awesome. Thrilled to have you all here. Okay. All right, so you should be able to see the screen and we're ready to go. So when it comes to recovery, many people are running around and this is what they feel like. They are run down, they are tired, they are drained and their battery is low. Hands up if you can relate to that. Because when your battery is low and you feel drained, when you go to perform, this is the prime time for you to injure yourself. What we're trying to drive you towards is to fill up that tank so that the battery is full here. 
so that you have the energy and the reserves to do the things that you want to do and perform at a high level and reduce the risk of injury here. So life is a contact sport. And Dr. Phil says, life is a full contact sport and there's a score up on the board. So my question is, is how are you doing in life? Are you winning or are you learning? The premise here is that healthy is normal. You are designed to be healthy and your body is very smart and intelligent. The nervous system is the master system in the body that controls and coordinates every single function in your body. It is your spine that is your suit of armor that protects those delicate nerves so that the messages from your brain can get to all the body parts and organs to communicate to that area properly to tell it what to do and what not to do. This keeps you healthy, it keeps you healing, and keeps you performing at a very high level. And to the degree that your nervous system is functioning optimally will equal your recovery of your body. And the last, we can all agree that modern life is unnaturally stressful. And hands up if your life has been more stressful over the last 15 months, yes or yes, absolutely. There's a big gap, an information gap, that leaves the consumer very confused about what true health really is. Most people go around thinking that health and sickness is like a toggle switch, that one minute you're healthy. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you are at your best, you are healthy, functioning great. Then Friday, something happens, and then all of a sudden, just like a switch, you're sick. Then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you're not feeling well, and then come Monday, boom, you're healthy again. That's not telling the whole story. The truth is, is that most people never achieve high level health and wellness. They are toggling between sick and not sick. And there's a big difference when people are not sick or asymptomatic in high level health and wellness. Raise your hand if you get that, because that's a big concept right here. Because most people are toggling with all the stress in their life. They're not at their optimum, but they're not exhibiting symptoms. They're in the center. And those people are categorized as immunocompromised. If you've been following us over the past 15 months, we've been talking about how the coronavirus is very contagious to many, but it's very dangerous to a select group of people. These are the immunocompromised out there. We want to move you out of an immunocompromised state to move you to more high-level health and wellness which is gonna help you recover from injury better and then help prevent future injuries. How cool is that? So what are these common sources of stress that we are all dealing with and coping with and adapting to? Well, it's thoughts, traumas, toxins. It's the thought life, it's the mental stress, it's the emotional stress, psychological, social stress. Then we have the toxins. That's our food, that's our nutrition or lack thereof. That's everything that's in our environment. And then the last one is the trauma. And we're going to differentiate between the macro trauma and the micro trauma here. So what is all this stress doing to your body? Well, it's impacting your recovery in a very negative way. It shifts your physiology from a healing and health promoting state, and it moves it into fight, flight, or fright. Those things are the sympathetic nervous system. That means that your cortisol levels shoot up. So you get the stress hormones going out of control. And there's a whole cascade of physiology that shifts where you start to get high blood pressure, your heart rate increases, your muscle tone increases. Now, let me ask you this. Is your body smart or is it stupid? Your body is very intelligent. So let me ask you this. Is it a normal thing for your body's blood pressure to go up when you exercise? Yes or yes? Yes, it is. Absolutely. It is normal for your body's blood pressure to go up when you're exerting. But you see, most of the day, the week, the month, the year, the decades, we're living in a chronic stressed environment, which shoots our blood pressure up chronically, and it's abnormal. And there's consequences to it. Then there's digestion that gets upset, either that you can't eat enough because you're trying to consume a lot of food to offset the emotions associated with stress, or you're just not hungry, so you're not eating. Your serotonin is decreased, so that disrupts your sleep. 
your moods and your general excitement in life goes down. Your sensory system goes up. That means that your pain receptors are more activated. And when it comes to injury, it's going to cause those whispers to become screams. Who here has been dealing with fear and anxiety? I have never seen a patient base more full of fear or more anxious than I have over the last 15 years or 15 months. And it was already bad enough before COVID and everything hit. So think about how fear and anxiety might be showing up in your world. This all leads us to be immunocompromised. Our immune system gets dampened. That's not a good idea these days. We need a strong, fully functioning immune system to help us fight viruses, bacteria, other microbes, the way it was designed to. Our insulin sensitivity goes up, blood sugar goes up. This is all a recipe for diabetes. Then our cholesterol goes sideways, clotting factors go up. That sounds to me like stroke potential there. And then our reproductive hormones, our sex drive, they all go down. These are the consequences of living in a chronic stressed out environment when our body is not recovering properly. You see, it, the symptoms are the effect of the problem, but not the problem itself. In our office, we call it a body signal because our body is an intelligent organism. It's trying to teach us and tell us, are we on the path and the road to high level health and wellness? Or are we moving away and we're creating symptoms and we're creating disabilities in our life? So symptoms are the tip of the iceberg. The cause of those symptoms are what we find below the water. So what are some of the most common work, sports, life injuries, uh, and symptoms that people present in this office with? You know, we got neck pain, tension, uh, headaches, shoulder pain, rotator cuff issues, arm pain, numbness, tingling, carpal tunnel syndrome, which is the wrist, the hand, the fingers. Uh, we get golfer or tennis elbow. And just so you're aware, you don't have to play golf or tennis to get this condition, which is really a tendonitis. We're going to talk about the itises in the moment and describe what that means. You get mid-back pain, rib pain, breathing trouble, low back pain, which can turn into sciatica, which is that painful uh, sensation down the back of your leg into your foot. You can get hip bursitis, knee pain, and then ankle injuries like sprains and strains. Hands up if you've ever dealt with one of those in the past. So the itis, what is this whole thing about itis? How does it relate to injury and what do we need to know about it? Well, simply put, let's just break down itis. Itis means inflammation of. So you probably have heard the term arthritis. Okay, arth means joint, itis means inflammation of. Very smart, right? Inflammation of a joint. So people are like, doc, do I have arthritis? Well, we got to define a little bit more what that means because you can have an inflammatory response in the joint and no physical symptoms of it, meaning like, no bone spurs. So it depends on how long these itises have been going on and your body's response to the hard tissue and soft tissue's response to that. Then we have things like uh, bursitis. Well, the bursa is a cushion pad between bone and tendon. So common areas of bursitis is gonna be right here at the top of the shoulder. It's gonna be right here on the side of the hip Sorry, the camera's not going down that far right now, but it's right on the outside. It's kind of like where the pocket of the pant is right on the side. So those are common areas of bursitis. Then you get what's known as tendonitis. So let's kind of take like here on the outside of the elbow, that's gonna be more of a, what they call a tennis elbow. And then right here on the inside is more of a golfer's elbow. Again, you don't have to golf or play tennis to get those conditions but a really good um, test to know if you got an inflamed tendon is, if you go to move the joint and then there's pain in the area, if you're moving it and there's pain, that means then it's a tendonitis at some level. So you can get rotator cuff tendonitis, that's when four muscles of your shoulder get imbalanced and get overused and a lot has to do with posture, we're gonna get into that sh shortly. But I think it's important for you to understand what these itises mean because it's really gonna dictate behavior. 
Should you push through the pain? Should you slow down? Are these overuse injuries? Are these repetitive stress injuries? I know a lot of people that just decide to push through the pain. So we're going to talk about that more in a moment. So what are all these symptoms telling us is what direction you're heading on this wellness paradigm. So I want you to place yourself on this paradigm at where you're at. Neutral is zero. High level health and wellness is a 10. And if we go all the way to disability, we're going to say minus 10. So where are you at? Where are you at in this moment? Are you negative 10? Are you zero? Are you plus 10? Where at are you on this chart? And I want you to be thinking about over the last 30, 60, 90 days, think about over the last 90 days, where were you? So are you uh, moving in the right direction towards high level health and wellness? Or are we stuck? Or are we slipping backwards? Where are you at? Because where, what direction you're heading here can give us some clues at how your body is recovering from your injury. Because you might be wondering why your symptoms are stagnant and why they're not improving or why they're worsening. This gives us some clues into that. So put yourself where you're at. Our paradigm in this office is all about wellness. It's about proactivity. So I want to honor each and every one of you that are here this evening that committed one hour of your life to learn more about what you can do to promote more health and wellness within your body. So great job on that. And for those of you that will watch this into the future, I honor that because you're an action taker. That tells me a lot that you care about your health and wellness. The treatment paradigm, the, mer the medical paradigm is all about treating symptoms. Once the symptom's gone, you get released. So it's not really healthcare system that we have, it's more sick care because we just treat the symptoms. But I could tell you that's gonna lead to bigger problems down the road and screw up your recovery if we don't heal the body. So what's your sport out there? Some of you were typing it in. Is it basketball, football, soccer, tennis, baseball? Is it lacrosse? Is it gymnastics, cheer? Are you a runner? You walk? Uh, what is your sport out there? Is it work? Okay, is, uh, you know, are you, are you, you working all these hours, grinding at work. What about, I love that picture right up here. Uh, we see the kids, you know, high-fiving over the parents with the mess right there. I've definitely felt like that at times. It's an uh, it's awesome chaos. If you're a parent, you know what I mean? And how about the mom there that's working at home and, you know, she's, uh, she's trying to work and she's, you know, watching the kids at home and managing their schoolwork. So what's your sport? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on helping your body recover in the most natural, effective and powerful ways here so that you can continue to handle whatever life is thrown at you. So what are our options out there? What are allopathic options? Well, allopathic options are gonna be heat, bed rest, drugs, physical therapy, ejections, um, pain management, surgery. Are there any alternatives? Well, I get this question a lot. Um, I had it today. Hey, doc, do you think I should take this drug? You know, you think I should do this injection? And I have to ask the question is, I don't know until I know what your goal is. So in order to get results, I find that my clients that get the best results in our office are the ones that have the most specific goals because you can't hit a moving target. So a more clearly defined goal is going to help us uh, direct you in what you should or shouldn't be doing. So, you know, is bed rest the, uh, the right thing to do? I don't think bed rest is very good because your body's not moving. All those joints start to lock down and scar tissue starts to build up with that injury. injury. How about like, should I be bracing? Well, at, the, at certain appropriate times, if you sprain an ankle and, and we're pretty certain that you didn't tear a tendon and and things like that, or break a bone, then bracing could be very appropriate in the short term. You probably heard of the price uh, principle, protect, uh, rest, uh, ice, elevate. Um, so that could compress and then elevate. That, that could be very appropriate. But long-term bracing is not gonna be the solution. Everybody's case is a little bit different. So I don't want to say one thing and, and let it be a panacea for everybody you need to consult um, with Dr. Travis or myself or your wellness chiropractor 
or if appropriate, then your orthopedist or some other healthcare professional, depending on this type of injury. So should you ice or you heat? I mean, this is a big debate in there. The bottom line is this, is that you're going to ice and when it's acute of 48, 72 hours is a great time. If you injure yourself uh, to ice, you're going to cool down the area and you're going to work on some natural pain management. The research shows is it doesn't reduce the inflammation. And in fact, uh, you don't really want to be reducing the inflammation when you have an acute injury because that's your body's natural um, healing mechanisms there to help your body recover. It's when we screw up uh, the infl inflammatory response by taking NSAIDs. You take Tylenol, you take uh, Advil, you take, uh, um, I guess, naproxen, ibuprofen, the Aleve and stuff like that. That actually screws up the, uh, the innate healing me mechanisms after an injury. But people don't tell you that. They say, just take it because we're trying to kill the pain. I get it. I, you know, it's not fun to be in pain. But what are we doing on the backside to help improve long term health outcomes? So we're going to get into some supplementations for recovery here um, and things that you can be doing naturally. Uh, heat is a muscle relaxer. So is it a good idea to put heat in an inflamed area? You know, if it's acute, I don't see that as being a good idea. If you got a chronic issue, he could be uh, palliative, give you a little bit of relief. Uh, could give you some more blood flow to a stiff area to help with range of motion. But we got to be really careful at how much we're using heat. The drugs, are we looking to mask the problem? You know, I don't know. You could take a drug and it works really well and it kills your pain. But is that a smart thing to do when there's an injury there and you continue playing your sport? You could feel better, but the underlying problem will continue to get worse. And then we get to physical therapy, which is very appropriate at times. Should you do steroid injections? It's kind of going to that palliative, you know, drug treatment, pain management, surgery. Uh, I think surgery is a last resort kind of thing. I think we'd want to avoid that as all, at all costs. If we could do something more conservative, in my opinion, and we'd focus on that. Because you see it all over in the news. We know there's an op opioid epidemic. We know that there's so many failed surgeries out there. You know, so you want to take this as conservative as possible, the most natural, most powerful and effective ways here. I got some things for you to start doing and stop doing. In my opinion, that's a better route for you to help you achieve your health and wellness goals. Because we don't want to be masking the real problem, right? We want to get to the root cause, because if we don't get to the root cause of it, you're more prone to re-injuring yourself. Hands up if you get that. This is a big concept right here. And these are the things that we must understand because our beliefs about our health, our beliefs about injuries will drive our behaviors and our behaviors will drive our outcomes there. All right, Aaron, great to see you there, my, my friend. All right, so we're gonna be talking from the third tier healthcare from the rest of this presentation. There's three tiers of healthcare out there. Number one is the treatment of disease. The treatment of disease is to keep people from dying. I'm very grateful for the treatment of disease and all the men and women that are on the front lines that are in the life-saving crisis care. They're very smart, intelligent, caring, helping people. At the young age of 42, my dad had his first heart attack. And if it wasn't for the crisis intervention, he would not be with us today. He just celebrated his 70th birthday on Monday. So I'm very grateful for the life-saving crisis intervention. And at the very appropriate times, that makes a lot of sense. If somebody has a sports injury and they fracture their leg, like, yeah, don't, don't go to the chiropractor just yet, okay? We need to go to the ER and have that bone set casted in the appropriate treatment right there. That makes sense? Then we got the prevention of disease. We've been talking about this the last 15 months. You've been seeing it all over the news. Wear masks, no hugs or high fives, social distancing, um, those type of things. And although all those things may prevent disease and the others treat disease, look, neither of which do anything to promote the health of the individual. Our strategy and what we've been talking about and beating this drum over the last 15 months and now going on 13 years that we've been serving the community is all about empowering you of what you can do to make your body healthier and stronger naturally. That is the way. There is no quick, easy fix here. You must be willing to do the work and what's required to keep your body healthy and strong. Otherwise, you're getting sicker and weaker every single day 
and you get on this carousel of this endless loop of getting drugs, so on and so forth to treat symptoms, but never really fixing the underlying root cause. We have a better way here. So if you're a note taker, get out your pen, get out your paper, and we're gonna go through the do's and don'ts. And I want you to start writing down what makes sense for you. Create a list of start doing, create a list of slow down, and create a list of stop doing. This is gonna be very powerful because it's gonna give you actionable items that you can start to work on over the next 30 days to build strong habits to promote health. So let's get into it. We talked about sources of stress. Let's get into thought life right here. And here are things that you can do to improve recovery. Because what you need to understand is that when your body is in a sympathetic fight or flight stress response, your cortisol goes up, it shifts your phys physiology, and it causes a cascade of events in your body that if we do not get you out of this, it is a pathway to heart disease, cancer, diabetes, Alzheimer's, arthritis, and all these chronic conditions of lifestyle. It's not your genes, it's not bad luck, it is your lifestyle that will either uh, switch on the uh, genes that cause those illnesses, or it'll keep them turned off to promote health and wellness. So think for recovery, choose your attitude. Attitude is not everything, but it is the difference maker out there. Wake up every day expecting the best and something positive going to happen in your life. You can't control the weather. You can't control traffic. You can't control your coworkers' mood. But what you can control is your attitude and how you're showing up. The next one here, connection, acceptance, and respect. These are all nutrients that fuel the human soul. Without these things, your body is going to be deficient and it's going to cause a cascade of stress hormones that is going to block optimal recovery. Gratitude journal on this list is my favorite and my go-to. Writing down five things daily in a journal about what you're grateful for, what's beautiful about your day, what is something you can be thankful for. Every day, we have something to be grateful for no matter where you're at in life. Writing it down is a very powerful exercise. How about unconditional love? And extend some unconditional love, not only to others around you. We're all human here. We all make mistakes, including ourselves. But extend people some unconditional love, including yourself, and some grace. The world is already tough enough on us. We don't need to beat ourselves down. So extend yourself some grace. It will improve your recovery. And affirmations, saying things like, I am healthy, I am strong, I'm getting healthier every day, I'm getting better every day, I am flexible, I am happy. Saying those things on a regular basis helps improve our overall general well being and improves our attitude. And meditation, I love meditation. There's a great app on the phone that you can download. It's called Headspace, five, 10, 15 minutes a day, combine it with some deep breathing will help get your body in a more recovering, parasympathetic rest and repair state. You have to talk about sleep when we're talking about recovery from sports injuries or any injuries, your body needs sleep. I don't know about you, but I've tried to do that whole thing and cutting corners on sleep, trying to keep my foot on the gas pedal. Eventually it will catch up to you. So if you wanna optimize your recovery, seven to eight hours of uninterrupted sleep, is very solid to keep your body in the parasympathetic rest and repair. Less than that, your body switches over to fight or flight, which then distorts your body's recovery from injury. So you got to protect your rhythm. If you go back into March and watch the replay there, we talk about the circadian code that how there's a biological clock in your body that specific activities from what you uh, when you sleep, to when you eat, to when you work out, and so on and so forth, are at, um, optimal rhythms in the body. But modern life being unnaturally stressful disrupts all those rhythms. You must protect your rhythm. Early to bed, early to rise. Okay, this is very powerful when it comes to your recovery. Eat fast, shut the phone, shut the TV, shut the electronics off an hour before bed. That's very clear because the blue light on the screen then disrupts the melatonin production, your cortisol levels stay elevated, 
and the melatonin, which is the hormone released from the pineal gland, cannot secrete enough to get you into a sleep state and then get you into the deep uh, rhythm there. Take naps throughout the day. 10, 15 minutes is a sweet spot. This is one of my secret weapons in the midday. I'd like to shut off all the lights, put on some meditative music, and just, just chill out. Just disconnect, okay? Don't overcommit. Who out there is trying to put 24 ounces in a 12-ounce glass? We keep trying to shove more and more in, and it just continues to add more stress, which affects our body's recovery. And check your expectations. I heard it once said that the greater our uh, expectations, the greater our unhappiness in life. The more acceptance that we can exhibit in life and uh, changing our expectations of others and so on and so forth will increase your happiness. But just check your expectations because the bar may be way too high and unachievable no matter where you're at. Okay. The next is a source of stress. This is toxic stress in your body. This is from a nutrition standpoint. So what can you do to fuel your body? Because if you are deficient or toxic in what you are eating or missing in your diet, your body will not recover properly from an injury. So we like to say, never go hungry. And the battle is won at the register. Don't go to the uh, store hungry. You're going to buy a lot of unnecessary things, and they're not going to aid to your overall health and wellness. Don't drink your calories. So like the sodas and anything like uh, the Gatorades, the Powerades, and things like that, don't drink your calories. Avoid the white stuff, white flour, white sugar, white rice, and then fill yourself with healthy foods. And what are those healthy foods? Unlimited vegetables. We like to say, excuse me, what we like to say, eat the rainbow. Eat a variety of colorful vegetables. They carry phytonutrients, antioxidants that are going to fuel your cells and your tissues and your organs for optimal recovery. You can have lean protein here, such as grass-fed beef, um, wild-caught fish, uh, uh, free-range organic eggs are, are all fantastic. Organic chicken are great sources there. You can have some fruits, I like berries. Those are really great. Nuts and seeds. And then you really want to avoid refined carbs and then the sugars because that'll spike your blood sugar. It'll lead to more inflammation and it'll take acute inflammation and it'll start to make it chronic. What do you want to do for supplementation? Well, my number one go-to right here is omega-3 fish oil. Okay. This is the one with the A and D and you get your vitamin D, you get your omegas in there. And this helps put your omega-3 to omega-6 ratio in proper balance. The standard American diet, which is abbreviated SAD, and yes, that's SAD, is pro-inflammatory. You're going to get too many omega-6s that spikes up your uh, in inflammation response, and people are deficient in omega-3s. You must supplement if you want to recover at the best. Here's another one that you want to get to is turmeric right here. If you're not taking turmeric, turmeric is a fantastic supplement. And this has made a big difference in my life and then my patient's life. We start adding that in with the omegas, plus with their adjustments, other lifestyle changes, we just start to see improvements in clinical outcomes right there. So you wanna take turmeric. Turmeric is a polyphenol when combined with omega-3s, helps manage your inflammation properly and it helps the repair of the tissue properly. If you take a NSAID, which is like naproxen or ibuprofen, that disrupts the healing cycle of the tissue. You may kill the pain, but the healing cycle of the tissue cannot heal properly. If the tissue doesn't heal properly, but you're feeling better, what do you think is going to happen the next time you go use that joint and use that tissue? It's going to re-injure itself, and now we're going to be in that same cycle. So remember, supplementation for recovery. It's supplementation is that. It's not replacement. It's to supplement a healthy nutrition lifestyle. And then the last form of stress here we're going to dive into is our traumas. And what type of traumas? Macro traumas. So this could be slips and falls. This could be car accidents. It only takes five miles an hour 
of trauma to our spine in a car accident to cause a bone to get misaligned to start to stress out the nervous system. This also could include sports injuries and sports injuries that happened even years or decades ago. That's a macro trauma. So lots of concussions going on with the kiddos today and a lot of sports, people being very mindful of that, but the sports injuries can create problems. And then the last one being born. Anybody here watching this ever been born? Okay, that should be everybody raising their hand here. But birth trauma, eight out of 10 children when they're born are born with trauma to their spine and nervous system. If it goes unchecked, it goes uncorrected and it can lead to more injuries. Remember, it is your spine that is your suit of armor and it protects these delicate nerve messages that go from the brain to every part of your body. And to the degree that this nervous system can function optimally and uninterrupted will determine how well your body recovers from injury. Subluxation is that joint misalignment. So as a chiropractor, we are the only trained and licensed professionals out there to locate, detect, and correct subluxation. The subluxation causes soft tissue damage, muscle spasms, inflammation, irritates the nerves, imbibition is lost, and imbibition is the movement of this, the disc in between the bones right here, or the joint that then drives in blood flow and proper nutrients to keep the disc healthy, and then flushes out toxins. Well, if that's not happened, toxins build up, leading to more injury. The joint gets stuck and it elevates your hormones. And it can lead to things like a disc bulge, a disc herniation. A disc bulge is where the outer walls of the disc bulge out. A disc herniation is where the jelly on the inside pushes out from the outside. It's like a jelly donut. So when that gel goes out, it'll push on that nerve and it can create numbness, tingling, pain down the leg, pain down the arm those type of things. And it, we talked about the stress response. This is the stress response from subluxation. It causes that nerve irritation and more importantly, it interferes with the body's natural innate ability to heal and recover. So does this look familiar to anybody? How about we talked about macro traumas. Let's shift to call, talk about micro traumas because this is the thing. This is the thing that is destroying your health and it happens so slowly and innocently, it doesn't seem like a big deal. It's the technology. Does this ever feel familiar to you? Okay. Modern life's unnaturally stressful. It's the micro traumas. It's the micro traumas that is setting us up for injury, whether it's playing a sport, whether it's doing yard work, housework, projects around the house, or just life in general. Sitting has become the new smoking and all the stress is mechanically putting your body at a disadvantage. When your head goes forward, it makes a 10 pound head feel 75 pounds to the body. Shoulders roll in, we're gonna get into posture in a moment. But all this is impacting your spine because your nervous system is like the electrical panel that contains circuit breakers to your body. And when there's subluxation, it impacts how those nerves communicate throughout the body. So how do you know if you have subluxation? You get tested for it. So when you come into our office, we do specific instrumentation that can tell us if you have subluxation. Our tests in the office include heart rate variability, which measures your body's recovery potential. The higher the heart rate variability, the better adaptability your body has. And ultimately, wellness is simply your body's ability to adapt readily and appropriately to stress. So this could be sports, this could be working out, this could be any type of exercise and how well your body adapts to it. So what's critical for your recovery in the body is keeping your spine well aligned. And as a chiropractor, our sole job is to detect subluxation, correct it, and then teach you specific lifestyle habits to do and avoid to help your adjustments hold better so your body continues to recover better. Because 10 per, less than 10% of your nerves sense pain. Pain means pay attention inside now. 
This comes up often as doc, should I just push through the pain? I don't know, you tell me, your body's smart. If there's pain going on and you push through it, I'm concerned that you're gonna make the underlying problem worse. There's a big difference from being some muscle soreness and working through that to a pain going on that is alerting you of a big underlying problem. So here is the three-legged stool of optimal health outcomes in the office is number one, keep your adjustments in rhythm. So your uh, recommendations that we give you are only based on two things, our clinical findings and your health goals. And whatever that equates to as far as your rhythm of adjustments, keep your appointments on time and rhythmic. That allows myself and Dr. Travis to do our best work for you because missing any of those adjustments is gonna impact your body's recovery cycle here. Keep your adjustments in rhythm. That helps optimize your health outcomes. The second is break bad habits. The third is exercise to strengthen those muscles along the spine to help your adjustments hold better. The posture, look, here's the deal with posture. When you have poor posture, it's setting you up for injury because the mechanics are off here. Posture is connected to good health and longevity. The better posture you have, the better health and longevity. And imagine your head as a bowling ball, 10 pounds up here. If I were to ask you if the bowling ball was right here or here, position A or B, what's easier to hold longer, position A or B? Well, it's definitely going to be position A, right? Because when it's out here, all these muscles are going to fatigue. And within about you know, 10, 15 seconds, your arm's going to be shaking. Well, this is exactly what's happening to your head when you're on your cell phone and doing this for hours on end right there. That's causing stress, and it's going to set you up for injury here. So according to these studies, is that the amount of weight when your head goes forward is amplified. So just a couple of inches of your head forward and down, looking at your cell phone, laptop, things like that, makes a 10 pound head feel 75 pounds. And this British study right here showed that it increased risk of heart attacks, poor posture, head movement forward, cardiovascular disease. It affects our emotional state and our well being. You know, yoga gurus have long said it's impossible to depress with your armpits open. So if you're not feeling up to par, consider bringing your arms up like this. We're going to talk about YWTL. And the long-term effects right here, unfortunately, poor posture, two times more likely people were to die from pulmonary causes and 2.4 times more likely to die from cardiovascular disease. Is this you? Are you sitting too much? Yeah, we all are guilty of that at times. We're not, we're not meant to, to sit all day. Okay, but too much sitting, that stresses out your nervous system, your body, and impacts your recovery. So to long, active, energetic life, few things matter more than posture. So if you're curious about what your posture looks like in our office, we take an assessment right here. We take a look at what your posture is and we work on that. If you need some ergonomics on if you're sitting or you're standing with your posture, you can email Lynn or the next time you're in the office ask us for this handout because we go through uh, the best practices here to keep your body in proper alignment. And when your body's in better alignment, when you go to lift weights, play your sport, run, whatever activity it is, your body's going to be in better position to adapt to that sport. Okay. Take a deep breath. We just covered a lot of ground here. And now we're going to shift gears into some practical and tactical things you can start doing this evening to start to recover better and prevent future sports injuries here. YWTL, you will thrive longer. So here are the basics. We're gonna want heart up, proud posture right here. Okay, Lynn, come on in here. She's gonna help us demonstrate this. All right, Hi. Lynn, say hello to Lynn, everybody. We love Lynn. So Lynn, let's honor you. Thank you for being here. You're a woman of many hats. I'm always here. You are always here. You've got our backs. 
Um, and if you didn't know this, Lynn is a certified personal trainer. So I love about Lynn, many years ago, um, Lynn was my personal trainer. That's how we got introduced to one another. And so uh, she gets it. I love what she teaches and we're gonna share some of that here. So abs ridiculously tight. So if Lynn was gonna punch me in the gut. I'll push you like this. Yeah, go ahead. Don't move, don't move. Now relax your core. Okay, see the difference right there? So that's a quick, easy demo right there. Now, if you're doing this with somebody in your household, okay, we're not saying shove them over, okay, and knock them over, play nice, but that's the difference in how you know whether you got your abs tight. Just think about if somebody was gonna punch in the gut or if somebody was just gonna push you right here. So you ready? Get those abs tight. Okay, good. All right, squeeze the shoulders back and down. We live like this in technology. Get the shoulders back and bring them down. You're gonna to wanna to take two to three deep breaths in the abdomen in each one of these positions. You're gonna keep your thumbs backwards and you're gonna do these YWTL exercises one round for every hour of sitting. Cool? All right, let's get into it. All right, so the Y, is going to come up right here, and Lynn is going to go through these points. You want to you want to bring it, those arms up with your. He says your thumbs back. I got my hand back here. Squeeze my squeeze there. You got it. That's how you know your shoulders are retracted. Okay, mm -hmm. keep the shoulders down, thumbs back. Right here. Yep. And where are they going to breathe from? Right here. Yep, from the abdomen. Yep. So inhale. Exhale. Okay, you're going to hold that for 20 seconds. The next one is going to be the W. So we're wearing the we're wearing the Nats here for a wellness webinar. Okay, talking about sports. Okay, so the W for wellness right here. So you're going to go back and same principle, shoulders down. Shoulders down. Get yeah. those abs engaged like that and squeeze the shoulder blades back. So if you're there with somebody, they can feel between your shoulder blades if you're squeezing there. Two to three deep breaths in, proud chest, heart up. And you're gonna hold that for 20 seconds, two to three deep breaths in. Watch this here, you have his ears over his shoulders. That's another way for you to either look at yourself or somebody else to see that your posture's in check. So like what Lynn's saying here from the side, She's saying, be careful of this. You want ear over shoulder, proud chest, okay? These things, they may, they're gonna seem so small, so fundamental that you could overlook it, but never underestimate the fundamentals in preventing injury because so many shoulder injuries are the result of poor posture, rounded shoulders, and you try to go use your shoulder that you haven't actually used for a month or so, and then boom, you get an injury right there. And when there's an injury to the shoulder, if it's not fixed, then it goes down into your elbow, then it goes down into the wrist. And this is how things start to compensate. Your neck starts compensating, so on and so forth. So this is key to upper body and lower body injury prevention. So the T, the T is you're gonna stand and just bring your arms straight out, shoulders down, squeeze right, here. right between your shoulder blades there. Good, and let's turn around this way, Lynn. I'm gonna squeeze, where should they be squeezing? Right there. Right through here. Pretend you got, not my hand, but a pencil or something right here, you're holding it. You probably could. Okay. So my question is, what are you all feeling there? When I do this, I'm feeling like sensations in my tricep. I'm feeling like almost a muscle knot on the inside of my right shoulder blade. Yes, I have these compensations too. And it's important for me to practice what we preach here. It's all about progress, not perfection. Using the baseball theme, think about hitting singles, not home runs. The next one here, we're gonna tuck the elbows in. Tuck the elbows into the side, just like if I were to give you a towel, hold that towel underneath your armpit, bring 
those elbows in and squeeze the shoulder blades back. Thumbs pointed backwards, lower down, head over shoulders, engage that core. See, Lynn's checking to see if I got my core engaged. And thankfully I do, okay? But that was a good one. That was a good one. Lynn's keeping me in check. Well, I okay. I have a good model to work with here. If you have any questions along the way, feel free to type it up in the chat. So you will thrive longer. How often are you gonna do these? Type it in the chat. Okay, the next one. All right, who is ready for some push-ups here? All right, Lynn, I want you to start off by sharing with people what some of the modifications that they should consider when doing the push-up. Okay, so most people think of the push-up just like you're looking at this slide. I would urge anybody who is going to start with the push-up to start against the wall. So you're going to just, um, I don't even know where to go here, but you want to go like this, like this. This is a push-up. That's where you want to start. Okay, you got shoulder issues. You want to make sure that that you're not stressing your shoulders when you're going down, and you want to make sure that everything is in alignment. Just like you can see that guy there, he's on the ground. You want to start against the wall. If you feel comfortable enough, and you, you'll probably feel those. If you feel comfortable enough and you're ready to get on the floor, you want to start on your knees. And we don't call those girl push-ups anymore. Those are modified push-ups. That's where you want to start. Because if you go from zero to what this guy's doing, this perfect push up here, it's going to just injure every part of your, of your body, especially your upper part and your shoulders. One of the most important things that I'm going to share with you here this evening is that you must, when recovering from an injury, you must meet the body, meet your body where he or she is at. You must. Because pain means pay attention inside now. We must start somewhere and then build off of that. This is where we check the ego at the door. We let go of, oh, I used to do this back 15 years ago. Meet the body where it's at. And then if you listen to the body and you slowly hit singles, not home runs, hit singles consistently over time, you are going to build health and strength and minimize re-aggravating that injury that slows you down because one way or another, your body will take what it needs here. So if you don't listen, it's going to cause more pain and it's going to take longer to heal. Or you can work with your body to help optimize the healing. So I think if I bring this camera over to the side right here, I could use this. Okay, so this is about the best I'm going to be able to show. So you can go at the wall which you're maintaining basically a plank from your ear to your ankle, a straight line, and you can do push-ups against the wall. Then a amount of, you know, a step up from that, if you're looking here, then you can go like from a desk, okay? Getting into this range, just like that. Then as Lynn mentioned, you can take it to the floor and then you can start off of the knees. And then when and only when you are ready, that you can go for just like this gentleman is demonstrating right through here. You want to have hands shoulder width apart or slightly wider. You want to engage your entire core, which means like pretend you're going to get sucker punched into the gut. And then engage your quads. But what was the game changer for me is when Lynn taught me to squeeze the cheeks, and that means engage the glutes, because that helps you hold the plank longer and focus on proper form and technique. Chin, uh, chest and chin, tuck at the bottom of the push-up, uh, touch at the bottom of the push-up, and then full elbow lockout at the top of the push-up right there. Another thing I'd like to say is when you're doing that push-up, no matter where you're doing it, you want your body, your whole body's going down together. So if you go back over here, mm -hmm. this over like this, I would like for you to quickly demonstrate where your neck is improperly going down and your neck is sticking out. Yeah, so okay. like here. Like that. That is not okay. So now this, this whole body is going down together. And so we don't want to do that. Correct. 
They go down together, no matter where you are. It could be up here against the, against the wall. You could be on the floor. That, that way you're not gonna hurt yourself. You know that you're doing the push up correctly. Yep. So let's go here and then I think we can catch this. Okay, we're good here. So this is what you wanna be doing. Okay, can we see that on the camera? Yes. You're in the plank and basically you've got your core you got your glutes, you got your quads tight, and you're going down and then up. And you know, depending on where you're at, it doesn't matter where you're at, you start somewhere. Your goal today might be to get one push up. It might be a push up against the wall, and that's okay. Find out where you're at, and then you could build off of it. A push-up is one of the best whole body, body weight exercises. You don't need a lot of space uh, and it works a lot of muscle groups together. Okay, so we got the push-up. So if I was setting a goal, I would probably have you work up to doing 20 push-ups a day. There's a lot of different challenges that you could do. 20 push-ups a day. Start wherever you're at. That might be one against the wall then you can build off of that. Anything else on the push-up? Okay. The next one here is we went through this at Bulletproof Your Lower Back, but this is so important to a lot of other moves for your lower body and for your, excuse me, upper body, that if you don't master the squat, you're setting yourself up for injury. So let's talk about a few things right here when it comes to the squat. So Lynn, would you like to, I'll, I'll, I'll be your model here and you tell me, you tell me what you want me to do. Okay. And again, the first thing I want to say is we all squat in many activities we do in our life. And if you can't do this, there are many modifications to do this. The one thing I would say to everybody out there is if you can't do this right, don't add weight to, to doing this. Yes. So this is a body weight exercise and it's all about the way that you do it, the form. So sit, set your butt back. Okay, you so. want to keep your weight on your heels. Okay. So you can almost wiggle those toes, those toes, excuse me. Your chest is, they call it proud, your chest is up. So again, you want to do it long for me for a minute. You want to, that is improper. Now go back. I don't want to hurt Dr. Brandon here. Okay. So you want to maintain this curve, but you don't want to lean forward. Okay. Yeah, and I, I just want to be very clear on that. As I would, Lynn had me move forward, that was a, a open window for an injury right there. Okay. So I could feel it in my lower back. She has me trained in how to do it properly, but that is a great demonstration of how just one wrong move with the right intentions will cause an injury. And that'll impact your hips, that'll impact your knee, that'll impact your ankle so on and so forth. So, so as I was saying, if he was in that improper form, imagine he's holding a hundred pound weight on his shoulders, a bar, something like that. Just think of how that is going to exponentiate the issues in his body. Okay. Okay. So you want to go ahead and go down all the way perfectly. And it's, as I said, all the way down to or below parallel and back up. I like using my hands as a counterbalance yep. in front. So it's out like this and then up. So, you know, checking the, like against here, you want the weight in your heels. Now, here's the thing. Don't go from zero to 100. You can't go all the way here. Lean back and you want and go partially down. Mm -hmm. Just remember all of these points with your chest up, you know, your, your cheeks squeezed, your, your feet flat on the ground. Go partially. Don't try to compensate by bending your body forward or, or putting the wrong muscles involved. Here's some quick, easy ways to hear. If I'm going to go to a higher level, I might just go here, touch, and then here. This may be where you're at to start with the squat. You start going. And then you might be ready to graduate and do something like this. Just go like that, okay? The other thing that you can do is you can actually sit in the chair. A exercise ball is better, but you can sit in the chair. You have the lumbar curve, the proud chest right through here. 
you're going to tighten up your quads and your glutes, and you're just simply going to engage it like you're coming up and then down. I want to be very clear is that I'm not saying bounce. You don't want to bounce, but you're coming up and then down, up and then down, up and then down. You're not bouncing, but that engages very similar muscle groups without putting so much stress and strain on the surrounding anatomy. So these are all good modifications to start somewhere. With the goal of this, the challenge is to aim to do 20 squats per day. So here's one thing I'll say. The, the thing that you should challenge to yourself if you're not able to do a squat, here's what you should work on. Work on getting up out of a chair without using the upper part of your body. Mm. That is the first thing. So I know some of you have seen me and I because I've made comment on it. Watch yourself. You're sitting down in a chair, you're pushing your pushing your hands to lift yourself up. If you work on nothing else, start there so mm -hmm. that you can lift your body up, sitting and bringing yourself up. The most basic movement, it's not, you don't even have to call it exercise. Love it. Anything else to add when it comes to the squat? No. Okay. So when, we, when we're talking about exercise, we're talking about having fun here because exercise should be fun. We can make it fun in a lot of ways. And, and challenges are one of those ways right through here. So if you're looking to do something for yourself and you want it to challenge yourself in the month of June, we have this 30 day plank challenge right here that WebEx uh, Exercises was so kind to share with us. And a plank is basically, you know, you're gonna, for a push up, you're gonna do a plank that's moving with your arms, but a plank is just a very stationary core exercise here that'll help improve your posture balance and core strength. When your core strength is stronger, not only are you gonna hold your adjustments better, but when you play your sport, your body's gonna be more adaptable and responsive to the stress that it's under to help reduce injury there. So it starts at day one of holding it 20 seconds. And look, if you can't do 20 seconds, start with 10. You can always modify this in 30 days. The point is, is that you're gonna show improvement in strength and how long you can do this. So this is a fun activity here. And if that's something that you're interested in, we'd be happy to share this resource with you and then support you along the way there. But planks are a fantastic exercise to help engage your core and support your spine and other areas. I do have one thing I wanna say about the plank. So don't start this challenge until somebody's watching you do the plank correctly. You don't need to be doing this for 30, 40, 50 seconds where you're you're not in perfect position like like this guy is in the in the picture, because if you're if you're not at 90 degrees with your your shoulders and your elbows and you're holding it in the wrong position, you're going to create an injury. And that's right. The whole point of doing this is to create activities to help support your health, to help strengthen your body, not to cause injury. And have an improper form and technique and doing this poorly will set yourself up for injury, so on and so forth. So how do you know if you have subluxation? Well, you get checked. And if you're a current client already, you've had your posture assessment, we had the uh, heart rate variability, x-ray, things like that. If you are new to chiropractic and wondering if you do have subluxation, your next step in this process is to come in for an initial assessment here. The deal is, is that you don't wanna put this off. Either you're getting healthier or stronger every single day, or your body's getting sicker or weaker. Implementing these things that we talked about here is going to help your adjustments hold better, help your body's recovery, and help prevent injury into the future. So we have a little bit of time for Q&A. You all have been great here. So type it up. Type it up in the chat box. What was your one takeaway? What was your golden nugget? What are you going to start doing over the next 30 days? What are you going to stop doing? What was really speaking to you during this presentation here? So type it up because I know that you sharing something important here, not only is a declaration to the world saying, yes, I'm going for it, but other people are going to be inspired by what you have. So I'd love to hear your, your nuggets, your takeaways, and any questions that you would like us to uh, answer here.
Oh, that's awesome, Sandy. I love, I love the interaction. Yes, you are moving in the right direction. And what I love about what you put is you continue to move in the right direction with the consistency, not only with your appointments, but then also uh, what you're doing on the outside. So I honor your work there. Keep up the great work. All right, let's see what we have here. Yeah, absolutely, Karen. So let's let's take a look and show the squat from the chair again. So we had two positions with the squat and the chair. I showed these two positions because they're two different heights right here, okay? So let's take a look at this. So this modification can be done with pillows, but I don't have access to those right now. But I'll, let me show you what we can do right here. So I'm going to use the armrest of the chair, and then we'll use the seat. I can go ahead and show this to you. So when you're here, okay, so what you want to do, weight on the heels. You're going to, like you're sitting down in the chair, maintain that lumbar curve, proud chest, shoulders back, and you're going to sit and then come up. Sit and come up. So what you can see, my range of motion is modified. So I modified the range of motion in the depth that I'm going down. Your knees should never track in front of your toes. That's a great way to aggravate or cause a knee injury. So you want to keep your knees basically the set over the center of your foot. Okay. Um, so let's look at that again. Down back up, down, back up. Now, if you're ready to graduate and go a little bit deeper, you know, I could have this chair here and I could actually put a pillow on top of it. So I don't have to go all the way down, but I can even have an intermediary step, but you're gonna go down and up, down, up, down, up. It could be anything in your house. You could do it to, to the height of your bed, no matter what, just watching him and watch what we were talking about before. Maintain the form. You're just reducing the range of motion. Yep, you're reducing the range of motion to meet your body where it's at and then work on getting healthier and stronger and building off of that. Does that help? Thumbs up there. Okay, Grace, absolutely. Set some goals. Set some goals and work up from that. You got to have a, a starting point. I cannot emphasize this enough. You can't, like um, the clients who get the best goals in this office are the clients that have the most specific goals because you can't hit a moving target. So care enough about your health and well being and be willing to do the work to set some personal goals for the next 30 days between now and the next wellness webinar to work on. You know, I set a goal. We, we didn't really highlight hydration in here, but I set a goal because um, I was challenged to drink a gallon of water a day. I'm not saying you have to do that, but you need to drink more water, period. You want half of your body weight in ounces of water. So if you're a person that weighs 150, you want 75 ounces of water, just pure water. Okay, just pure water. So drink the water for hydration. There are so many of my clients, I'm always amazed at how many tell me they don't drink really any water. I'm like, how can you possibly expect to be healthy and recover from these injuries you're seeing me for if you're not drinking water? And now we're getting in the summer months and it's getting warmer, more humid, things like that. If you're dehydrated, it's a stress on the body. Your body gets more in that fight or flight, and it's going to dampen your recovery, period. All right, eat the rainbow. And that's right, no Skittles, Dr. Travis. You're exactly right. More colorful foods in the diet. All right, Damien, there is a clear connection between mind and body. Mindset, activity, and listening to your body are all important. Damien, that's one of the best things I could ever teach my clients. And in fact, the most healthy of my clients, the ones that get the best results are the ones that have 
awareness about where their body is at and then have a positive attitude at working towards those goals and overcoming any challenges they may have might have arrived with and working towards a healthier, stronger version of themselves. Great job. Definitely, Sylvia, this is a big one. Aligning your ears over your shoulder. It's a, a chronic problem. And we can be very mindful for most of the day, but then there's a few hours in there that we forget about it. We become fatigued, we're tired, and our head starts going forward. We're slouching, our shoulders are roll, rolling in. And it starts to put so much stress and tension on our shoulders. And then we simply go out to the kitchen and we reach up into a cabinet for a bowl. And then all of a sudden we strain a muscle or we're picking something up off the floor. Or we're putting on a sock in the morning and then bam, we get triggered by that. Ears over shoulders, shoulders over hips, hips over ankles. That's the way that it works right here. So work on that. Picture a string on the top of your head and then just gently pull it up like you're pushing your feet into the ground and your head towards the ceiling. This can prevent a lot of injuries right here. Oh, you're welcome, everybody. Karen, you're welcome. Thank you all for joining in. Love and appreciate you all. Then the next few days, I'll have the recording sent out to you. You can rewatch this one. This is one you're going to want to watch two or three times. Take the nuggets away. Compare how you're doing with eating well, moving well, thinking well, reducing the stress that's causing your subluxations and leading to injuries in your body, and then improving your body's recovery and uh, adaptation to the stress that it's under. Have a safe, happy Memorial Day weekend. Lynn, thank you so much for joining in and always being there and helping out. Dr. Travis, Grace, Catherine, thank you all for participating. Great job for everybody who is on here tonight. We look forward to seeing you next time. And just remember, for you and your family's health and wellness, we always have your back. Have a great night. Bye, guys.